Hey everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to be testing Flutter versus React Native versus Native Script, and we're going to compare the build speeds, creating a new project speeds, and run speeds of the applications. This is not a performance test, this is just a getting started setup test to see how quickly you can get up and running, up to a running application. We're going to be using Hello World applications from each one of these frameworks on a new M1 MacBook Air. By the way, if you want me to run this test on the older Intel box, let me know in the comments down below too. And if this is your first time here, I sometimes do giveaways and I'm going to do one in this video as well. I'm giving away a license of Parallels. Thanks to Parallels for hooking us up with a bunch of licenses to give away to you folks. Stay to the end of the video to find out how you can win. And let's get started with a test. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna go to my code folder. I'm gonna create a new directory for this test. Mobile speed, that's a boring name. Crazy Mob, I like that better. Let's go to Crazy Mob, and I'm gonna create three folders here, each with a different application flavor. We're gonna start things off with React Native. And I'm also gonna show you what versions of everything I'm running because in 10,000 years, this video will be obsolete. So it's better to uh, make sure we have the versions all straight. We're on version 16 of Node. I'm gonna use NPX for React Native, so it's gonna get the latest version. I've got version 8.0.1 of native script installed, which is the latest one right now. And we are on Flutter 2.0.6, so pretty recent. One more thing I wanna mention is that I'm going to add up the total time it takes to create an application, a Hello World basic getting started application, and run that in the simulator. And because these frameworks don't do it in the same way, they download certain packages at runtime, and they download certain packages at build time, and they download other packages at creation time. That's why I wanna measure these separately, and I'm going to give a cumulative score at the end. That's why I can't give you the exact numbers yet as I'm making this video. So we'll find this out together at the end. Let's start with React Native. Create a new app, npx react native init, rn proj and i'm actually going to add the time command to the beginning of this to see how long this takes let's go so first we download the template and this part takes a while and installing dependencies for react native takes the longest here we go first result is 24.39 seconds now i'm going to do this a couple times so i can get an average let's create an rn proj one some of these frameworks might be caching dependencies locally. I think Flutter might be doing that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm not really a Flutter expert. I'm just learning. So that's why I wanna run this multiple times to see what the subsequent runs will produce as a result. All right, 22 seconds this time. And let's do it one more time. RN Proj 2. Hey, now we're getting pretty consistent. 22.27. All right, let's create a Flutter project. So I'm gonna clear everything and that's Flutter, create, flood proj, and we're gonna add a time command at the beginning. Wow, <laughs> so far Flutter is the fastest at 2.8 seconds. Now that's impressive. All right, let's run this one more time. Flood proj one, 2.75 seconds. Still pretty fast, a record so far. And flood proj two, 2.75 seconds. That's gonna be hard to beat. All right, native scripts turn. Time, ns create, ns proj. And because native script offers you a menu of what framework you wanna use, I'm actually gonna pass in a flag for just creating a plain JavaScript project. So that's dash dash JS. Okay, we're at 12.6 seconds for native script. Let's do another one. I'm gonna call this one ns proj one. All right, now we're a little bit faster, 10.2 seconds for this one. And one more time, we're gonna call this one NS Proj 2. No, you know what? Let's call it NS Proj 9999. All right, wow, 7.8 seconds, an improvement. I wonder if I keep running this, is gonna be faster and faster each time. I'm gonna take the three and just average them out. So far, here are the averages. React Native, 22.75 seconds. Flutter at 2.76 seconds, impressive. And Native Script at 10.2 seconds on average for the creation. Now we're gonna run each one of these and see which one is gonna be the fastest. And then we're gonna average the run plus creation time. So to be fair, what I'm gonna do for this test is start up a simulator, an iOS simulator, because on the M1, the Android emulator is not fully stable yet, and I don't really trust it yet. It's coming, it's coming, folks, don't worry. But uh, for now, for this test, I'm gonna use only the iOS simulator. So I'm gonna start that up before I run any of the projects. And what I'm gonna count as application started is application fully showing on screen, and I'm gonna use a stopwatch on my phone in order to time it. 
Not the most scientific method, and some of you will point that out in the comments, I have a feeling, but it's gonna be close enough, and I'm gonna do this three times. All right, so I'm gonna kick off the simulator here. iPhone 12 is the default, and that's fine with me. And let's just take a look at all our projects here. I'm only gonna use one project from each one of these frameworks. So I'm gonna delete the ones I don't need. I'm gonna delete Flood Proj 1, Flood Proj 2, NS Proj 1, NS Proj 2, and RN. There is no NS Proj 2. I confused myself. It's NS Proj 9999, and also RN Proj 1 and RN Proj 2. Let's blow all that away and keep only the ones we need. And let's start with RN Proj. So I'm gonna go into that directory and I'm gonna run this npx react native run dash iOS. And when I hit enter, I'm gonna also start my timer at the same time. Let's go. All right, so this is building the project now, building the app. And when it starts up in the simulator, I'm gonna stop the timer. All right, it's still building. Come on now. Is something happening? Building the app. I'm not getting any other feedback. I guess I should have done verbose mode to see what's happening here. All right, so far it's 50 seconds. Wow, something must be happening, right? Now, the first run is always gonna be the longest. I also wanna time subsequent runs. So we'll take a look at those also. Okay, we've got Metro that popped up in a window. I got my finger hovering over the stop button. This should be coming up soon. All right, all right, here we go. And buffering, bundling. I feel like I'm watching Netflix and it's on a slow network here. There it is. Okay, folks, we're at two minutes and one second. That is a long time, but subsequent runs might be faster. I don't know. I'm gonna write this down and we'll come back to that. All right, the next thing I wanna do is terminate that process and terminate that window. Let's go home in the simulator. Now I'm gonna keep the simulator running and that app is already deployed to the simulator. So I'm gonna run that again. And this time it should be much faster because that app is already built. All it has to do is just verify and deploy it and open the app up. So that should be much faster. I'm gonna clear my timer and let's do that one more time. I'm gonna hit enter and start at the same time here. All right, so Metro is up and the app should be coming up. Where is it? And... There it is. Okay, this time 13 seconds, much better. 13.2, one more time, just for verification purposes. Let's clear this and let's run this one more time. Boom, 7.2 seconds this time, much better. On to our next test with Flutter. So I'm gonna leave the simulator on and we're gonna have all our apps lining up over there. Let's uh, back out of here and let's go to our Flutter project. Now, because Flutter prefers to start the web application first, what I'm gonna do is delete the Android folder and the web folder. That way we know that it's only working on one app and that's the iOS app and it should deploy it right to the simulator because the simulator is open. So let's remove the web folder and the Android folder and we'll focus on iOS. So I'm gonna issue the Flutter run command here and let's time it. Let's go. Okay, it found the iPhone 12 and it's running the Xcode build now. Compiling, linking, and signing. A lot more feedback here. Whoa. Okay, first run was 23 seconds. That is really fast. That's pretty good. I think I know who's going to win this, but <laughs> let's just keep going. And what's nice about Flutter also, it's reporting everything on the screen here. Compiling, linking, and signing. How long that takes. Xcode build. How long that takes. 11.7 seconds. And then how long the syncing to the iPhone takes, which is 54 milliseconds. So I got a total of 23.69 seconds here for this one, but that could be due to all the other processes that go on before the build. And now let's do a subsequent run with Flutter. I'm gonna terminate this and go home on the app and let's do it one more time. Boom, gotta be close to that stop button with Flutter. Uh, uh, okay, I thought it was gonna be a little faster, but 12.95 is not bad. By the way, the subsequent run with React Native was 13.2, so these are very close. Let's do it one more time to see if Flutter's third run is gonna be faster than React Native's 7.2 seconds. All right, reset my timer, go home on the app, go home on the simulator, and let's run it one more time. Here we go. Is this gonna beat React Native? Close, but no cigar. 12.86. Very similar and consistent times with that. All right, 12.86. Ready for our third framework, NativeScript? Let's try it out. So I'm gonna back out of this directory. Let's go to our NativeScript project and let's take the simulator back home. All right, NS run iOS ought to do it. And I'm gonna hit enter. Let's go. Searching for devices. By the way, I've been doing NativeScript work for about six years now. I'm very familiar with this build screen. Xcode build. We're at 28 seconds now, 29. Now installing on the device and restarting the app. And there we go. And that took 51.42 seconds for the first run. 
A sub minute time, not bad. We're in second place for native script. Let's do a subsequent run. I'm gonna clear the timer. Let's go back home on the sim, exit the program, and let's go. Okay, here we go. Preparing the project, webpack, restarting on device. And there it is, 16.75 seconds. Pretty good, pretty good. So far, that's the slowest subsequent run, but we'll do a calculation at the end to see what the cumulative score is. And let's do it one more time. NS run iOS, let's go. Restarting on device and boom, 14.81 seconds. Not bad, a slight improvement over the last run also. So I know that uh, some of you folks might say that, why do you care about subsequent runs? Because live reloading works so well. Well, does it really? I mean, yeah, it does when you're changing very small things, but if you're making really big changes, sometimes live reloading is not reliable and you have to restart the application. And that's where the subsequent runs come in. Now, depending on how much you've changed in the application, the subsequent runs might be faster or slower. So those times will vary, but they won't be as drastic as a brand new run and a brand new build. Not always, depending what you add, of course. So what I'm gonna do is average the subsequent runs, but not the new run because that one is so different. So let's make that calculation. And here's the result for subsequent runs. React Native at 10.2 seconds, Flutter at 12.9 seconds, and NativeScript at 15.78 seconds. And now I'm gonna do the summarization calculation. I'm gonna take the average of the creation times. I'm gonna add the runtime, the new runtime, and then I'm gonna add the average of the subsequent runs. So we'll get our final score this way. All right, and here we go. React Native has a total cost of 153 seconds, 153.9. Flutter has a cost of 39 seconds, which is the winner. And NativeScript is in the middle at 77.4 seconds. So there you go, folks. That's it for today. Now, if you wanna enter the raffle to win a copy of Parallels, Parallels is a software that runs Windows on a Mac. It works on the M1 Apple Silicons as well. If you're not familiar with that, check out some of my videos showing that. You can find videos down below or up here. I'm gonna be picking a winner from the comment section down below in 24 hours. Yeah, that's right. This time I'm gonna keep it short. Last time it was a two week span. Now it's 24 hours and the rules are as follows. I'm gonna pick a random comment from a comment down below this video and I'm gonna check to see that you are a subscriber and I'd also appreciate a like. Thanks a lot, folks. Good luck. If you do wanna see this done on an Intel box, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, I'd appreciate if you hit like if you like this video. And if you wanna see more like it, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time.